Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Book Events, the wrestling dream match podcast. I'm one of your hosts, Martin Bennett. And with me, as always, is the Birdman, Anthony Hall. The Birdman is. <laughs> OK, come on. <laughs> uh, the uh, former NBA player who was very much uh, tattooed up. Uh, uh, is uh, the rapper with the face tattoos who uh, is responsible for, for finding Lil Wayne. Little and making Bur- him Larry Bird. No. <laughs> I was going to say Larry Bird. Like, <laughs> the Birdman Larry Bird is all elite confirmed. What? Yeah. <laughs> Anthony, uh, who? Boston what, Celtics, great. What wrestler came out with a freaking bird? Uh... A uh, wrestler that came out with a bird. This was wow. such a softball. <laughs> <laughs> it, it was it uh, that time when Eric Rowan had that little pet in the cage? No, that was a spider. We, yeah, shit. It, no, it's Jake the Bird Roberts. Come on, you should yeah. know this already. <laughs> oh man, <laughs> Jake the Birdman Roberts, uh, uh, hacksaw Birdman <laughs> Duggan. <laughs> <laughs> Diamond Dallas Bird, like we're good to go here. Yeah. <laughs> uh Stone Cold Birdman. All right, Marty. Coco Give me some more beware. Clues. Coco oh! beware. Wow. He's a friggin' Hall of Famer, too. <laughs> <laughs> I've been watching his old well, stuff. I haven't seen that, like, I haven't watched anything from his WWE days. He came out with a goddamn parrot every single uh, time. A parrot. <laughs> uh, you know. Oftentimes on this podcast, I like to admit that I am a, a recent uh, wrestle head, but I did watch uh, the Attitude Era growing up, and then nothing before that. So, uh, yeah, that's uh, <laughs> it's definitely old, but at the same time, it's like the Birdman. Oh, it's that guy who had the bird all the time. <laughs> Uh, Beware. You know, I've never the seen Coco a Coco Beware. Beware match in my entire life, and I know exactly who the frig Coco Beware is. You know, he was, gonna, he was pretty good in the 80s, but like I said, I haven't seen any of his WWF stuff. Excuse me. Oh, well, you know, that's Birdman, fine. Michael Keaton. Who's the new Birdman? In your route to Tony Hawk <laughs> Birdman. Wow, guys. Why didn't we think of this Shit. before? Shit. He's teaming with Darby it. Allen next week. Confirmed. Oh, yes. Oh. You should. It, I mean, someone new could take on the moniker of the Birdman. I don't know how you get that over. But <laughs> <Nope>. uh, anyways, <laughs> this is a, a, a shotgun Chaotic of an start. intro. Uh, Chaotic start. Welcome to the podcast. Uh, uh, Ari interjected into the conversation. We have a very special guest this week, Anthony, on our on our trek to episode 50. Ooh. We're bringing in the heavy hitters. And yes. uh, and just to just to show my friends that they matter, but not enough. Uh, episode 49, not good enough for episode so 50. Close. <laughs> We have uh, a man who has been a pirate, has been a lawyer, uh, and is, in my opinion, one of the greatest Pokemon Puzzle League players of all time. <laughs> my favorite game on the N64 uh, is one of my uh, <laughs> uh, was, was one of my favorite online friends uh, from Twitch.tv slash The Pun Hit Wonder is The Pun Hit Wonder. What's popping, Corn Kernels? I mean, <laughs> that's definitely an intro. I am a big wrestling fan as well. Uh, yes. So I, I don't really talk about wrestling enough. Unfortunately, I do need to more, but definitely something I've been listening to you guys since day one. I love listening to podcasts, especially wrestling podcasts. And Woo-hoo. honestly, I'm really happy to be here and talk about the topic that we're talking about today. So well, it's that I mean, thing. It's that thing that we have, because as as maybe some people uh, do or don't know, we've mentioned before on the podcast, we also stream at twitch.tv slash unknown era films, playing wrestling games, Pokemon stuff, loads of other things. Uh, hopefully some Mario Party soon. With yes, I've been talking with uh, both people, the crew. both parties involved. So, yeah, 
So hopefully that pops up soon. Uh, but like we've said before on streams and stuff, it's like as soon as you start bringing up wrestling, it's like it's so it's such a hugely popular thing, but it's also very still niche and it just becomes such alien language to everybody. And they're like, what's what? I and know like, the fact that we play video is. games online and for, for people to see. And then like, as soon as I have a couple of people who bring up wrestling with me and I'm just like, I just go off on a tangent. People are like, what are you talking about? I'm like, this is great stuff, guys. Like it's on national TV. It's on cable broadcast TV. It's, yeah. it's on Fox. It's on TNT. It's on, I mean, USA network. Sure. But like sky sports and across the pond, like it's, it's everywhere. You know, this is a multi-billion dollar business. It's like people will go into these exact same conversations about like Marvel and about Mm -hmm. like, like their favorite fandom. And that's essentially like what it's like when we talk about wrestling in front of non-wrestling people is like (laughs) the way that people talk about like, like breaking down the Spider-Man trailer and like all the fan theories and like, what could they do? All the multiverse. Oh my gosh. Is the same thing when we talk about like the ending to like AEW full gear and, or like the ending, like it's like, Oh my God, this person's here. Or like, what's going to happen next with this? Oh my God. It's all this story stuff. Cole and Brian Danielson, like at the same time, ridiculous. Just yeah. uh, so many fan theories and just, it's so much fun to talk about too. Yeah. Uh, could do it for um, days. But so, uh, as always with our guests, we have uh, we asked them to come in with a possible dream match that they want to book. And pun has one for us today. But before we get to that, of course, if you enjoy what we do here on the podcast, give it a follow. Subscribe to it on whatever podcast platform you get your pods on. Does that make sense? Yeah, no, <laughs> get I mean, your pods on. Get your pods, get your pods on. on. Not your AirPods, your pods, your pods on. Pod Yes. <laughs> Wherever you find pods, get them there. Um, <laughs> two for one special. Uh, so, yes. Yeah, so, Pun, you hit me up with a couple of dream matches we were talking about before we started recording, and I think we landed on one. So, let us give us a taste of what uh, we're going to be talking about today. So going back, there's a lot of history and what AEW really likes to do is go back into the histories and to the annals of careers of superstars or wrestlers, I guess, superstars, sorry, wrong promotion uh, of wrestlers. And they're like, hey, like where they been? Like they like to bring stuff up from the past. And what better way to bring up something from the past than what the EVPs have gone through, you know, with, with Kenny and the Bucks and the Bullet Club, but not the Bullet Club that we have today in New Japan. Unfortunately, it's not as strong as it used to be. But you bring back, I don't know, Prince Devitt. You bring back AJ Styles somehow, which we'll get into that soon. But just bring back all the members of the Bullet Clubs of past. And you bring along the Undisputed Era, one of the more more uh, more recently, like one of the most popular factions before they got split up, unfortunately. And there might be a good chance that they come to AEW. We just need cool Kyle to come on over because right now Mm -hmm. he's just too cool for school. So hopefully he comes along and, you know, and just we get an undisputed era versus bullet club situation, because I think it's not just two teams. There might be three teams. They're just a bunch of combinations. You never really, really know. And you just bring them together in a blood and gust match or some type of just massive conglomerate of wrestlers with their factions. And you just who comes out on top. We don't know yet, but hopefully we figure that out. What do you Ooh. think, Anthony? That that's a that was a perfectly succinct uh, intro to a fantasy booking. That was, oh, I I feel the the shivers. You got that the juices flowing. <laughs> yeah, I, I was like, I was like, oh my goodness, Tony Khan opening up the checkbook, being like, oh, all right, we're trying to set up uh, a match for all matches, and oh, a blood and guts finish to this feud is is very very spicy and and the way we get there this there's so many matches within this faction warfare that are individual episodes Mm -hmm. of this podcast Mm -hmm. themselves i mean yeah it's it i mean blood and guts i think is the perfect way to finish it because of course you know essentially war games and yeah (laughs) who are the kings of war games in the modern era the undisputed era. It's like oh, no, it's either that or it, stadium stampede. I mean, I don't know. Both matches. I, think, are- <laughs> I I love blood and guts, and I can't wait for whatever in the next build is towards something like that. And I think that possibly 
we might be kind of predicting it in this one anyways of what's actually mm. going to happen in real life because you know it's like i legitimately did not expect them to put coal and fish together i thought that's what they did in nxt we're we're above that we're not to say that aw is like no let's go with it. let's let's do low hanging fruit but like that they were like you know they did that we want to do new stuff and i was genuinely surprised that they put fish in them together and that they have heavily teased like something some sort of rift between cole and the bucks and like uh that sort of that sort of thing and then to have like all these people who have worked with each other or have been in feuds who have you have this so super long history like you said of like the bucks kenny cole um styles you got like, hangman involved too hangman yeah where you know there's you the, got the good brothers i mean i guess the the okay brothers right now so <laughs> they're <laughs> they're tag team champs aren't they uh and impact yeah yeah <laughs> so that's okay. i mean you know um I, 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 okay brothers i mean i love them yeah. <laughs> it's just like uh what they do but, is just so carny but so mm. yeah so it's there's so many possibilities so yeah i guess we gotta just figure out where this well i guess this gets started with styles and uh balor being released due to budget <laughs> So this is the call from John Laurinaitis to both Styles and Balor. Hey, buddy, um, <laughs> Vince says that we can't use you creatively, but we just say that it's budget cuts because you guys are getting old. AJ, you really don't want to go anywhere else. And Balor, like, we don't know what to do with you. You just lost last night to Seth Rollins by curb stomp. And like, you haven't really done much since facing off against Roman Reigns as Team and Balor. So what's Team and Balor? We don't really know anymore. So just, <laughs> you guys are released... Uh, wait your 90 days or else you get sued to hell. Uh, you have no chance in hell of winning that lawsuit. So uh, best of luck in your future endeavors. Perfect. So 90 days, Balor, Styles, excuse me, Prince Devitt, Styles, they're free agents. Where are they going? AW. Where else would they go? You it's, know? It's definitely or they reappear in New Japan. And they do like a hostile takeover of the Bullet Club. That'd be interesting. Ooh. Who who are the current? Ooh. Who's the current leader of the Bullet Club? Because uh, we were talking a- before this about like who are the original members and all that sort of stuff. Who is the current leader? Is it Jay White? Jay White is, and so is Evil. I think yeah, because oh, I think he went out or, or, or wait, he right. went well, like one of the the, the um, wrestle yeah, Evil is. Yeah. Is evil. Oh, interesting. Because so, he betrayed Naito, and then he he defected to the Bullet Club, and then it was like this weird. It was this weird storyline. I think it was like pretty much in the depths of the pandemic when Evil became the champion, uh, and then he lost. Just what the next to Naito again? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> or the next event? Yeah. Yeah, New Japan has uh, been uh, not perfect this past calendar year. Um, and so then I, yeah. I have a I have a quiz for the two of you. Mm-hmm. Okay. Without looking at the like wiki that we were looking at before of like yes. members of the Bullet Club, how many members are currently in the Bullet Club? Just take a Ooh. stab. Eleven. Okay, Ooh, Anthony. I- I think there's like 20 dudes probably just like here or there connected, not unofficially removed. There's probably like at least 20 dudes in this bullet club. So the current bullet club, Anthony was closest. There are, there are 16, uh, uh, like what's the word? Um, active members, active members. And then there's two part-time members. Who are the wow. part-time members? King Haku and uh, Tokyo Latina. Oh, how do you say that last name? Pieter. Pieter. Yeah, that's um, uh, that's Yujiro Takahashi's like valet. The, the, the oh, Tokyo okay. pimp. The yeah, Tokyo pimp. Okay. And the Tokyo like, hey, that name sounds familiar, but yeah, Tokyo. Pimp. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, that's wild. 
Only well, when would... they can afford to have her to make appearances is she a member of the book. But, <laughs> but so um, that's cr- that's crazy. That just like there's that's, that's too many dudes. I mean, especially nowadays, like with how little the Bullet Club actually has, like you know, impact, so to speak. You know, they don't really do a whole lot with them because you got you got mm. so many other factions in New Japan, which I'm not complaining about that. I'm just mm. like Bullet Club was so prominent. And now, like they tried to revive it, but having Jay White as your leader didn't really go so hot. So and then the evil mm. was even worse. So at least booking wise. <laughs> so um, they, so yeah. like, where do they go from there? Well, mm. Hopefully you know, AJ I Styles and Prince <clears throat> Devitt. I don't know <laughs> yeah. that much about New Japan. I kind of rely on other people to like fill me in on like the stories and everything. But like if it's Jay White and Evil, and I know that Jay White is now being more featured on New Japan Strong because it's like mm. you can actually face like different people and stuff here in the States. Um, but it's like, what if, you know, if you have these two leaders, well, why not have two of the original leaders? And you have AJ Styles and Balor show up and do a hostile takeover, taking out Jay White and and Evil, and then you could have tag team match. You can have singles matches, and uh, maybe a civil war within New Japan, where you take these twenty goddamn people and split them up into two groups, and then one of them yeah. wins out, and then creatively decide what. The other half will do. So you got the red and white bullet club. You have the black and white bullet club. You got bullet club wolf pack. Like, yeah, I see what's going on here. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, wait a second. Wait a second. I mean, oh, no, I think I could use some (laughs) Vince Russo. Uh, uh, We never specifically said which Vince. (laughs) <laughs> this podcast is based off of right that's true and uh, definitely and, not uh, vince russo um yeah <laughs> and for but, the for the longtime fans of this podcast uh for the, our longtime listeners uh early into uh book of vince uh a, a friend of the podcast cody crane uh, he was working with a publicist in la and he was like hey man i think oh, we you're might be able about, to get you okay. you I'm, he's fine, like we might be able to know about this <laughs> No, oh, yeah. I don't he's think like, I do. He's like, we might be able to get uh, a couple of people uh, like wrestlers and like kind of old school guys to be on your podcast. Uh, Anthony I think he's about to burn a bridge like with gasoline. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just but saying no, it's that funny. Like, it's funny. It's a funny story. We, we, ha- we had the potential to uh, get one Vince Russo uh, to be on the podcast and Basically, the publicist was like, hey, man, so I kind of I get what your podcast is about, but uh, Vince doesn't want to talk about any old stuff. Or really wrestling. And I was like, well, but (laughs) that's what he's known for. And he's like, "Okay, well, maybe we can get uh, a guy from Harlem Heat. And I was like, wait a second. I mean, they didn't say a guy from Harley. They straight up said Stevie Ray, which Stevie Ray still would be really cool. So Stevie Ray is listening to this. Love to talk wrestling with you. Yeah. Legend. So that's that's crazy. We could have. But then we also or one episode. Yeah. We also just sort of always open, you know? Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) We also just sat there and went. Do we really want to be the people that have Vince Russo? <laughs> that's, that's, really? a t- that's a tough bookie right there. That's that's uh, you know. <laughs> yeah, but, but anyways, um, so let's see. Okay, so I think obviously skipping forward into the future, you have you know this what's happening in Japan or possibly in Strong or whatever. Well, I think, or maybe I think it's, it worked better and strong because you're staying here in the mm-hmm. states you want to kind of compete with a w per se and like helping build that relationship up because it's strong what if one of them goes to new japan proper the other one goes to strong and mm. then they meet up and they do like super classic like oh we fooled everybody where we think oh we're gonna get Balor's bullet club and styles bullet club and then they do like like uh i don't know so what. you're making this motion but i think you need to make this motion oh, this motion. Like, yes. there you go. <laughs> the, the, too sweet. sorry that was too sweet <laughs> yeah. where we think that this is going to be a clash and then they actually are working together and it's like we were t- working together the entire time to take right. over the bullet club 
So they and, have been infiltrating from both uh, New Japan proper and from Strong. And you think it's going to be uh, a clash of these two leaders. And then they're just like, hey, guess what? This is uh, just a consolidating of power. So you have like yeah. a five on five main event at like a New Japan show, but like Balor versus mm-hmm. Styles. They have a team. Balor and Styles are the last ones in the ring. Like all the other teams are eliminated. Then they come together. They're about to like, you know, grapple. Then they just too sweet and just bow to the crowd. <laughs> That's how the show <laughs> ends. <laughs> it's a real big fuck you to their teams as well. <laughs> we just wrestled for 30 minutes. You yeah. guys beat the shit out of each other. And then we're just like, actually, we're this was it's like, it's the, like the Triple H Shawn Michaels thing where Sean just lays down for Triple H, you know, <laughs> or like uh, uh, the finger pet. That was it. The finger poke finger of, poke doom. of doom. Yeah, that was, <laughs> that's what I was also thinking. But yeah, it's like, it, and it's like, oh, just, that would be a, such a crazy ending to a show. Mm-hmm. Where, yeah, where I mean, the get anticipation talk. of like these two. Oh my god, we get to see these two finally wrestle each other outside of WWE, and they're like, maybe it's weeks or months of build up to like they establish their like old characters again, or like what their new version of their old characters are going to be, and then it's just like. Boop, we're friends. <laughs> Imagine the heel heat coming out of that, though. Oh, yeah. Like, oh, oh. that would be, whew, you know, be- and that comes along and then, you know, Kenny and the Bucks notice and they're like, what's going on over here? You know, well, then mm-hmm. then it's like what during all that is happening in a W, because right now it seems as though, like, obviously, Kenny is out because he has been literally destroying his body for the past uh, three years all to get W a W like over as hell. Um, and now the bucks are in this weird space of like, don't really know where they're going to go because like they finally accepted hangman as like having his potential. But then like Cole and fish kind of have this like, weird pseudo like i don't like uh like you like ue is coming back together again and uh cole is kind of like the one of the moments that really stuck out to me was how uh kenny was like i want you guys to take care of this place while i'm gone and then cole like kind of butted in with like no problem cleaner i'll do a great great job and, and that then, was the point i was going to mention like that's then, how that's how some of the tension is going to start you know maybe yeah. kenny mm-hmm. sees what the bucks are doing with cole and ue and he's like you know i might side with styles and devitt and that's going to cause some of the rift between some of the major like the, the elite itself you know yeah. and then hangman can come in you know, hangman can bring the dark order, you know, because mm-hmm. you, you have like the UE plus some of the bullet club. You have the bullet club. Then you have maybe like the dark order like, with hangman because he's part of like a big part of the the, the bullet club. Yeah, and that's just kind of like a weird triple faction situation. So and that's one have, way to do it. And you have hangman like maybe once hangman's done with this Brian Danielson stuff, which I'm all for. It's such mm-hmm. a crazy mm-hmm. turn. And I love Danielson taking on every member of the Dark Order. And I can't wait for this Wednesday. We're recording this uh, before the Wednesday where Brian uh, is facing off against uh, Alan Angels. And that's going to be a hell of a match. Um, maybe after all this, Cole wants to step up to uh hangman and this is then where we can start showing the like weird relationship between the bucks and hangman where like he ex- they accepted him do they want to like we see cole's ruthlessness against hangman um the bucks don't know which way to go on that uh and then yeah you start having like these weird factions all separating out and then maybe eventually i don't know Kyle O'Reilly shows up. <laughs> Maybe hey buddy, the Bucks- best luck in future endeavors. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe uh, Cole wants to like brutally attack Hangman, and the Bucks kind of stand in the way, and they go, "I don't, th- I don't know about that." And then that's where Cool Kyle like comes in through the crowd and attacks the Young Bucks, and then you have the original Undisputed Era back together again, 
and taking out the Bucks and Hangman. And then you have the Hangman and now face turn Bucks against who knows what they'll be called, but basically UE. Which is insane. Uh, the ammunition posse. <laughs> <laughs> Let's bring him in. <laughs> it would definitely be it's... like era something, but I don't know. We'll see. Oh, oh, you, oh, you meant you meant undisputed era. <laughs> yeah, I was no, like, undisputed I mean... era. <laughs> oh, I was like the Bullet Club, the Ammunition Boys. No, uh, I meant I meant Hangman and the Bucks versus what would be undisputed era, but who knows what they'll be called. Um, Undisputed Era is called uh, Best Luck in Your Future Endeavors. So they're called the Future no, Endeavors. I, I got it. They're the coal miners. <laughs> <laughs> it is all about the, the boom. Miners. <laughs> exactly. Oh. You need dynamite. It's dynamite. That oh. faction takes over dynamite, and then you got the ones taking over Rampage. It's uh, yeah. Oh. Let's see what's going on here. So then, <laughs> uh, Boom Boomtown. <laughs> the, the, <laughs> Boom Boomtown, KOR, Bobby oh, Fish. No, I got it. Oh, oh no, it, it is like it cuts. Budge. <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Good job. Oh my god. Budge. I was gonna cuts. I was gonna say it is like the NWO and instead of the uh black and white or the white and black attack, it's gonna be the gold and black attack. Ooh, that's good. Oh, but bud, all right, budge it cuts. Budge it cuts. sells itself. <laughs> um. So then, so now we're kind of in this place where we've created all these different groups, and there's different things happening. Maybe I don't know, Anthony. How would Kenny Omega come back to all this? What do you think? Would he okay. side with one? Where would he side with? Um, I, we need some logistics here. Uh, just like some some planning. Uh, so in a blood and guts match, how many people does each faction get? Because it's been a while since we've seen it, right? Well, there was only ever one. There's been one. Yeah. yeah. And it was five on five. So just, this would I mean, have to. But I mean, it's war oh, games. Okay. So it's essentially just like however many versus however many how many that you can fit into you know that style of cage you know properly right. and have a good match so let's say they expand the cage so that it's like the the war game setup so that you can cram 15 dudes in there 15 boys in a steel cage or two steel cages or two so rings. 5v5v5? Five five five? Or should it be for I mean, the sake of booking 4-4-4? I, four, mean, four, four. I mean, the first ever war games in NXT was 4v4v4. Four four four. No, wait. Yeah, it was 4... No, it was 3v3v3. Three three three. That's what it was. Because it was the original Undisputed oh, Era right. of yeah. the three of them versus... Wait, no, maybe I'm wrong. It was either I'm four, trying to think about it too. It's been a while. It was either four v four v four, or it was three on three on three. Um, I think I think three because doesn't Roderick Strong turn in the War Games match and join? No, he joins UE. Or is that no? A that one? was just that was just a uh, that was just a, uh, a regular tag match for the tag titles oh, where he turned oh, on right, Pete Dunn. Right, right. Gotcha. right, right, right. That was a good tag team. Yeah, it was. And what's Rod what's Roddy doing on NXT 2.0? Is the Diamond Mine still a thing? Yes. And he is the mm. uh and he is the Cruiserweight champion. The guy. He's the he's the two of he's a two oh five champion. 205 has become the most like you mean the 24 seven division. <laughs> well, it, it one, it features people who aren't cruiserweights. It features women. It it's they basically turned 205 into AEW dark. So main good. event, main event, elevation. main event. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. 
Oh, so crazy. So I need, we need to we need to find out how many people are going to be in this final match because if it's if it's three v three v three and we get AJ Styles, Prince Devitt, then we get the uh the elite or not the elite uh the undisputed era our budget cuts the the BC we get three there and we let's say we do okay. dark order and that's the another first, three the first NXT war games was in 2017 it was undisputed era Cole Fish O'Reilly versus mm-hmm. yeah. Sanity oh wow oh Wolf, wow. Young, you remember those Dane. guys <laughs> versus versus authors of pain oh my god with roderick strong oh, right okay, okay. That, that was the that, first wow. ever war game so it was three on three on three and then after that Perfect. they went to four v four you could probably do four v four v four in this one have like you could have styles debit and the good brothers on that side because i feel like the good brothers would match really well with styles since they did so well with the OG. Um, <laughs> right. um, and then you can have UE or uh, the budge it cuts on the other side. And then mm. some of the dark order, whatever that might be for this, you know, for this situation. But I guess how do we get there is the real question. Like how does bullet club match in with this AW stuff? That's what I'm trying to think of right here. So I think if we, this, this could work out really nicely if it is, uh, if it goes to three, because I think the uh, the Bullet Club uh, reformed the Ammunition Boys, uh, Prince Devitt and AJ Styles come from NJ uh, PW Strong to uh, confront some members of the elite, possibly the Bullet Club or not the not the, uh, the Young Bucks, um, and they could they could fuck some shit up, do some tag matches, and then you also have hangman just hanging around in the dark order and i think as you slowly build out this feud you're looking towards uh this blood and guts match that would be three 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 and it's like oh who is the last member of the bullet club team going to be and it's like who's on the shelf right now and who has been very prevalent in bullet club storylines well it's kenny omega right so So kenny omega joins aj styles and prince devitt as a bullet club trio to take on to basically the rest of what we've got. That's insane. <laughs> that's, that, yeah. I was going to say like, that's crazy. I love it. <laughs> that's just, that's a lot right there. You have the three, <laughs> you have the three former leaders of, <laughs> of bullet club forming together to create like the ultimate trio. That's crazy. The UBC. And then, the, yeah. <laughs> yeah. The ultimate bullet club. <laughs> Ultimate Bullet Club, undisputed budget cuts. And, oh no, no, uh, they would no. They're they're the BBC. Oh, oh, they're oh. They're, they're the baddest Bullet Club. Oh, that's what that stands for. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yup, I want Everyone, a BBC T-shirt right now. Let's go. And then, <laughs> and then, and then, and then well, the T-shirt yeah. would they would just steal the acclaims slogan, and it would be everyone loves BBC. <laughs> so the british broadcasting corporation yes uh tony khan could buy out that trademark we're fine oh yeah <laughs> okay tony so uh, tony khan and gato coming together for that no problems but so um, yeah okay <laughs> <laughs> so so okay just figuring out the three teams are uh mm. bullet club which is styles Balor and Omega. Yeah. Then you have the elite undisputed. Yeah. Yeah. Which Hangman is man and the bucks hangman and the bucks. Well, it, wouldn't it be Cole and the bucks? Well, because Cole is in undisputed oh, era, right? Yeah. Okay. So and then hangman you have, and the bucks would come along. Then you have budget mm-hmm. cuts with <laughs> Cole fish and O'Reilly. Wow. That's insane. Yeah. Wild. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This is, this is a, a, it's a crazy match. Like, so think about uh, if we're in present day, uh, AEW, um, Hangman has just 
sort of uh, proven his potential and his worth by securing the title and beating uh, Kenny Omega. And the Bucks are finally just like, oh, yeah, respect. Maybe we actually do care about you. And Kenny Omega just goes away for a while, right? So th- mm-hmm. so we could take some time to rebuild Hangman and the Bucks together. And if the Bucks are going to do like maybe a little bit of a cute face turn here, they could be a part of the dark order for a little while too and they could all run together um and then this gives the opportunity for cole and fish to be the heels like big time heels because they are separating from the bucks and we'll get to see some matches there uh yeah and now i'm like you okay have, where do we where do we go how do we introduce o'reilly and how do we get the bbc you have this <laughs> how do we get that bbc in AEW? um <laughs> you have uh you have this sort of like uh civil war happening in new japan of the the bullet club while yes. over in AEW, you have this sort of hostile takeover that like adam cole is basically trying to do with the elite and like sure mm-hmm. he has the super click um And I think what sparks that is what we talked about before, which is that Cole moves up the ranks to face Hangman and challenge him for the title. And this is where the Bucks don't know which way to go. You know, you Mm -hmm. have uh, the nostalgia that they've been riding on with Cole and the super click and all this stuff. But then you have their respect, their newfound respect for Hangman as the champion. He proved that he could do all the stuff that they said he couldn't do. And you have them turn face in with this and maybe not necessarily they are the elite, but at least they're back together as like. Basically what Omega and the Bucks were as heels, but now as face and you have the Mm -hmm. champion with the tag team. Um, And so maybe it is then this either a title match between Cole and hangman uh, and hangman wins, but then Cole wants to attack hangman, the box intervene and to basically have even numbers or then an advantage. This is then the surprise of Kyle O'Reilly coming into a W and you have this image of, him helping them attack the Bucks and Hangman and standing in the ring is is undisputed era. The ammunition they, boys or ammunition. Boys, yeah. Do they <laughs> do budget the, cuts, yeah, budget do, cuts, budget cuts, budget do cuts. they do this? Maybe. Is it going to stand for something else now? Maybe. I don't know. But um, I guess do they, I guess do they like throw up the UE? AW, uh, yeah, you could call them UE again, just like uh, I mean, the ultra elite UE ultra. Oh, yeah. Good, well, it's good. just I mean, it's just like how the, the revival F- was FTR. Yeah. yeah. And what's FTR stand for? Nobody knows. Fuck the revival. <laughs> Fairly tone retinas. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I whenever I just want to laugh really hard, I just watch out the compilations that people have made of every time Cody Rhodes says fuck the revival. <laughs> it's really funny because it's every time they're like they're like bullet club on three, one, two, and everybody else goes bullet club, and you just see Cody being like, fuck the revival. Because there's just a running <laughs> joke in BT while FTR were in a, in WWE is so funny. So and funny. So the reason why Adam Cole and um, UE wants to attack Hangman and the Bucks is because, uh, and this is how Kenny Omega will come back, uh, come into the, sh- uh, the, the feud later on, is that Cole is still pissed. He found out that the monster was poisoned in BTE. That's why he died for four years. And he's like, oh, you guys killed me, but you brought me back to life. I'm still pissed that you killed me. And then he mm-hmm. realized it was Kenny. So that's kind of where mm. that could probably start with the, you know, start a little bit of the, the bantering there. That's how Kenny uh, Styles and Devic involved. Because they mentioned BT before, you yeah. know, yeah, Silver had true. that, it's Silver true. had that thing with Budge, you know. Yeah. So. Oh yeah, that's gotten Ooh. over. 
This uh, all yeah. starts because of a monster and someone dying. It's perfect. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, Where, uh, is, are you sure Vince Russo's not here? You know, we have to yeah. talk about this. <laughs> Here he is! <laughs> um, oh, but, man. No, yeah. So it, it essentially, it's like in aid in and uh sorry in new japan you have this super group being formed of balor and aj and while in aw you have this battle going on between now the ultra elite or ue or whatever you want to call them um Mm -hmm. and hangman and the bucks now we have to decide how does bullet club show up in AEW or whatever so that then that kicks off so that we have this war between them, like the three parties, essentially. Is it that you have this match between Cole, Fish and O'Reilly against Hangman and the Bucks, and then that gets interrupted by these two? Um, Is it that Kenny returns and he returns with Styles and Balor, and that's the surprise. Um, depending yeah, on when it, this place, depending on when this takes place, you could probably tie the G one into this, okay. and have the G one kind of you know have certain matchups within the G one, like Kenny versus Ooh. someone. You know, that's where it, you know, like that's where Styles and Devitt can kind of have conversations with Kenny on the side and kind of bring up this idea about hey, joining the Bullet Club. Or the B, you know, the BBC, you know, and kind of just having that tie in, and then whoever has the title, whether it's Hangman, whether it's Cole, maybe Cole has a title, and then Kenny brings the bull, the BBC in, and then they go, hey, you know, I killed you once, I can do it again, but I want it for the title this time, you know, Ooh. and maybe that that maybe that can tie in here as well. So bring the G one in, have more New Japan stuff, because that's where a lot of the bull club, the BBC is going to be, is in probably the G one. You know, you have a couple mm. of the AEW guys because they mentioned before. I mean, Mox was in the last one, wasn't he? Yeah, you know, I know. Um, yes, uh, I know. I almost come Daniel Bryanson. Daniel Bryanson wants to be in this next one coming up. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> um, I do it every time. Daniel Bryanson, yeah. Brian Danielson. Uh, I struggle with that. Um, but you know, you have AEW guys going to the G one. That's where Kenny, you know, with Styles and Devitt can have a conversation. At least, you know, mm. maybe show a little something behind the scenes, you know, a little YouTube promo, Twitter, something, you know, maybe something on BTE, you know, and just kind of have that tie in. And then Cole with the champion, maybe Omega comes in with, you know, and that's where all, like all three can kind of combine. It could be to that, like Kenny does return and it looks like, OK, we're going to get face Kenny again. Um, yeah. And it's like, OK, he's back with the Bucks. Him and Hangman are all good again. And that's where like Kenny like takes out Cole. Uh, and then they're like, yes, Kenny, you're back. That's great. And then he ta- and then he takes out them. And that's where we reveal Styles and Balor and the Bullet Club Ooh. now coming in to take over AEW. Oh, that's insane. Ooh. Just imagine the end of a pay-per-view. You know, you have yeah, the end of a pay-per-view, you know, you have like Kenny, Hangman and the Bucks all kind of like on the ramp. And then you have these hooded figures come in. They reveal themselves. You got you got the good brothers and then you have, you know, Styles with one hood, Devin with the other hood standing over them, you know, too sweet in each other as the show goes as I don't know, Revolution full gear and so whatever AEW pay-per-view goes off the air, you know. And Kenny Kenny is champion again with the BBC standing over the uh Ultra Elite, or no, they're the it could Hangman be, and Clang. Uh, yeah, Hangman and be, Clan. It could either be a three on three, or it could be the title match between, like, another title match between Cole and Hangman. And Hangman wins. They're celebrating. You think that's going to be the end of it, and then all of a sudden, uh, Kenny's music hits, and he comes out, and him and Hangman kind of have like that moment of like, oh, like. Are we this okay? Is <laughs> like, 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 what's gonna happen? But then he like hugs them instead. Um, I don't know if it's uh, uh, it'd be something like how Cole debuted. You know, there's kind of like yeah. that awkward moment, and then he does something to be like, "Hey, I'm on your side." That type of deal. I was thinking, does he, give, does, he, does he give Cole a one winged angel? <laughs> 
<laughs> Maybe a V trigger <laughs> that might be a bit easier, you know? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Be like uh, like a easier, speedier, you know, situation. Like you don't pick him up for the one of an angel. You just hit him with a V trigger, then they all hug. So could be something along those lines. And then how do the four others show up? What do you mean the well, four? It's gotta be a, it's it's so, gotta be a double turn, right? Because Styles, Balor, and the and the, well, yeah, so, the good, good yeah. brothers. Kenny Kenny V triggers Adam Cole to say, "Hey, I'm on the Hangman and the Bucks side," and then mm-hmm. yeah. Styles, Debit, and like the Good Brothers come in just as like extra backup and just take out everyone in the or ring. It's, or it's or it is that thing of like it is a double turn where yeah, Kenny comes down and he's with he's. Uh, with them maybe Cole like stands up in a corner and he just starts like yelling at all of them like I hate you all like uh, uh, like like kind of like um oh, what is it um I'm just thinking of like <laughs> it's like a scene from Lord of the Rings where it's just like the bad guy <laughs> being like oh like overrun with all the good people he's just like you're all gonna you're all gonna pay for this or something like that and and then that's where kenny then v triggers adam cole and everybody cheers uh and then bullet club music hits Mm -hmm. and they Mm. come out and the four of them come out and it's the four of them and the four of hangman page or sorry uh hangman kenny and the bucks and then that's where kenny takes one step back and turns on the Bucks and Hangman, and mm-hmm. then it's the Bullet Club standing tall. So it was a turn, oh. and then another turn. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, yeah. The double turn. Ooh. Yeah, yeah, that's perfect. So he takes a step back, and he grabs a chair, and then he looks, behind, and he looks right at Roman. I mean, ah, uh, he looks right at. <laughs> I was thinking the same thing. Oh my god! And that's when Mox shows up and gets angry because that's yeah. PTSD right there. <laughs> Uh, that's that, funny. Uh, that's that's pretty cool. So I think all right. So just to just sum up how uh, the the uh, big bad bullet club, uh, the BBCs, um, <laughs> that's the BBBC. Uh, to sum up how they debut, pretty big. So we have another uh, title match. Uh, the rematch clause has been enacted for this pay per view. Was uh, it a championship and- contender match though? That's the real question I have. Ooh. Uh. Was no. there one? <laughs> I believe there was. Yes. <laughs> yes. Their rankings were high enough. We're good. <laughs> it was probably it was probably Cole versus uh, Daniel Bryanson, and then Cole wins. Uh, or no, Cole's the champ, so it's, it would be Hangman versus Danielson again. Then Hangman wins, and we have at AW I think Revolution. Having, I, I think have I think I, it's a minor detail and it really doesn't matter in this whole thing. But I think having Hangman mm. as the champion through all this is what's needed. Like you have two kind of evil factions and then one good faction. It's like the good faction should have that little edge of like being the. It's like it's the world champion. Okay, so okay. Cole would retain over uh, uh, Hangman would uh, retain over Cole. Then. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, yes. Anthony. I was we we're gonna get to it. I just want to make sure. Oh yeah, no worries. Okay, so uh, yeah, so then I guess Hangman has been the champion the entire time. Mm-hmm. Uh, Cole has lost, uh, but somehow he gets to weasel his way back into another shot. Uh, by beating somebody in a number one contenders match. So now at AEW Revolution, we've got Hangman versus Cole. Uh, Cole has already got his reinforcements. The uh, ultra elite, the undisputed era, the budget cuts, uh, Fish and O'Reilly. And Hangman is now back good with the Bucks. We have a great match. Five stars at the Tokyo Dome. Meltzer's happy. We're happy. Uh, Hangman retains. The good guy wins. And then... Oh, that Kenny Omega music hits. Uh, and everyone's like, holy shit. He's back. He's back. The cleaner's back. He's coming for the title again. Um, and then we debut him, or I guess his comeback is very similar to when Cole debuts. He's in the ring. We think, oh, damn, what's going to happen? Is he coming after Hangman? Nice little hug. Nice, nice little hug. These guys, they love each other. All the hard feelings, it's over, you know. Then, boom, we uh, see Omega really solidify his loyalty to the Bucks and Hangman by V-triggering Adam Cole in the face as he tries to get out of the ring. (laughs) Then, of course, 
some more music hits. We love hitting music. We love hitting video packages here on the podcast. And it is the goddamn BBC. It is Devitt. It is Styles. It is the Good Brothers. They have their hoods on. It's a nice little zip up hoodie. They rip off the hoods, show the Bullet Club t shirts or the Ammunition Boys. And they rush to the ring. And Kenny Omega takes a step back and pushes Hangman into what I assume will be like a sling blade or uh, maybe AJ Styles does a phenomenal forearm or whatever to, uh, to hit Hangman. And it is madness. Now we have three warring factions, uh, trios, which we could tie in the trios belt to at some point in time, mm. which will probably exist. Um, and now we're set up for some, some more fun activities as we build up to our blood and guts match. That's insane. I think then like we don't we don't have too much time to go into like little things. I mean, you ha- there's just so many possibilities leading up to this, but like so many dream matches of Cole and Balor or or I mean they've already done that, but like to have that again, AJ and uh Kenny um Hangman and Balor, like I was gonna say, you, Styles and Hangman would be really good to really yeah. fun to watch. I don't know if they've faced yeah. off before, but mm. you have so many possibilities, and there's so many little nuggets of past like storylines of you know different leaders of the Bullet Club, different members of the Bullet Club, people who have turned on each other to get to the top of the bullet club and like hangman's then sort of it's funny how like everybody's sort of involved and then it's you have like uh cole fish and o'reilly can like talk like can basically talk about how they became a better version of the bullet club um uh they were the top of like they were the top of nxt um you have Hangman who was a part of it and can kind of talk about how he doesn't need that anymore, that the Bullet Club is more of like, I don't know, he can be like, the, uh, people thought the Dark Order was a cult. The Bullet Club's more of a cult than the Dark Ooh. Order. Yeah. Um, yeah, they have and 16 like, active members, bro. <laughs> Sounds like a cult to me. <laughs> and like, talk about how, like, the Bullet Club uh, is just so that certain guys can get to the top while leaving everyone else below. You're know, like just trying to get crumbs. Um, like really dig into kind of the emotional aspect of like what did the Bullet Club mean? What is it now? Um, which group is better? Uh, have all these rivalries with each member crossing over like yeah there'd just be so much potential of interesting storytelling but the biggest question we have is how do we get cody involved i feel like that's the biggest piece I'm <laughs> <laughs> he's gonna be so jealous he's not getting all this yeah. attention yeah oh, all these ridiculous. all these people are all these people are in aw when the bullet club music hits we cue the cody gif of him hearing it he's like oh <laughs> <laughs> oh lord that's it'd be so it'd be so funny if uh if cody in this obviously since he uh would never stoop to this level uh as a character but he, he's it'd be so funny if he's tried to just replace one of the people on either one of these teams because he wants to be in this big match <laughs> so he's he like going it. around yeah <laughs> hey guys what's up hey remember when i was in the bullet club oh i was never in undisputed era but Hey, I was in the WWE once. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> we need that Hang center, the center ramp yeah. entrance though, like I'm telling you. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus. Um, <laughs> no. Oh my gosh. Um, <laughs> I know in improv, you're supposed to yes and things. I'm giving that a hard no. no. Um, <laughs> we, we love Cody. We love, oh, love no, Cody. No, for sure. It's just. Uh. So now I guess it's you know 
none of these yeah none of these guys have been in blood and guts yet um mm. but you can have undisputed era like boast about how they are the kings of war games uh and this style of match um I guess then it's like leading up to like, how does blood and guts get introduced? Obviously it can be just as simple as like s the most chaotic dynamite ending ever between all of these people. And it is officially announced that Tony Khan said, there's only one way to settle this and it will well, be in, but that's and what guts. I was thinking. Cause you have so many people involved in all sides, you know, besides, yeah. uh, besides under uh, budget cuts. I mean, they don't really have backup. We have Hangman with the Dark Order. You have Styles and Devitt and Devitt with the BBC. Now you don't want those two like two big ass factions getting involved. So the only way to sell it is in a big ass cage with nine people. That way, no mm. one else can get in. No one can get out. You yeah. have to sell us in the ring. Um, you can throw the trios title in there if you want. Um, maybe like whoever you know, if if hangman gets pinned whoever pins hangman is a champion from another team or just have some type of championship involved if you want to but i think this is so much of a blood feud and like maybe no it's the right to be called bbc match so <laughs> or like the, the like the <laughs> ultimate bbc uh extravaganza uh you know like <laughs> but like whoever whoever wins the match gets like a, a like they can call themselves like the the og bullet club but like the best bullet club so uh, hey, I just uh, checked your credit card statement, and I'm wondering what this uh, pay per view is. Because it's um, the BBC Extravaganza. Oh, don't worry about it. It's a. Uh, don't it's worry just, about that. It's just guys. Just guy stuff. Uh, excuse me. Uh, yeah, yeah. It's just like a bunch of a bunch of really awesome guys. Um, they're they're in a they're all in a room together. It's nine guys, oh. they're it's nine guys, and they're all in a cage together. Oh, <laughs> all wearing tights. It's it's fine. Oh, they're lotioned oh, up. No. Oh god, <laughs> what is it? I'm I'm so sorry. Jesus Christ, uh, that'll go so well on TNT. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, I guess then the question is like, obviously, this would be one of the most incredible matches ever. Yes. Like. And and to have these nine guys like just absolutely go to like go to town, go to. I was literally going to say go to town on each other. God oh. damn it. Oh, okay. Uh, oh. Uh, no, it's a yes and moment there. No, yes and yeah, moment. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> to have these guys, you know, f battle each other and it like gets the point of the brutality of what war games does and what blood and guts can do like uh but i guess the question is who goes over like who wins it's that's Ooh. so tricky so well, i think the, go for it anthony mm, um i think if omega's coming back and uh, i think there's going to be an expectation that omega will face hangman uh after this so I think you have to have uh, the BBC, the people who are coming in hot, go over. That is my opinion, because then you set up that Omega and his faction, the real leaders of this company, uh, defeated the champ and his boys and these other guys as well. So it's only fair that he gets another shot at the title. That's what I think. But I was just going to say the same thing. Yeah. Like, Omega, like um, the BBC goes over. So it allows the 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 badass Bullet Club to take on like hey like Cole and Hangman in the Bucks kind of like all right like this is big ass faction coming in we need to team up to take them on so there's a big I don't know make a big ass twenty man Rumble situ Royal Rumble situation or Battle Royale I'm joking please don't do that um, but you know just like have these factions just go against each other and just maybe have this one big ass tournament you know just brackets and you know have you know the two finales at the end you know two people at the end face off you know. And just have like a an interesting situation. Maybe that'll be for the title, you know. Mm. I think that's the only way to have it over. So that way, like the the the, the faction work can continue, but have Cole and his and the UE and Hangman and his group come together at least for now to take on Omega Styles, Devitt, and the rest of the BBC. That's very interesting. It's very Marty, what do you think? Who do you who do you think should go over out of all I of think, this? I, I mean, you have 
three of the greatest wrestlers <laughs> to be within all these companies. And it's like, how do you not have them win? It's like, yeah, thinking of like of Undisputed Era winning, it's like, yeah, it's their match, but like they're not the three top stars of this company. You have the champion and having Kenny win would be something huge to then give him a reason to face off against Hangman again and have that feud right. happen. Um, but also it's like you have Styles and Balor and this could be a great way to pro- to propel them to then have them do something big on in New Japan, whether that's go for the heavyweight title over there um, or something else like it would be huge for them. And it's such a powerful image of like Omega standing there with the like these three greats just standing atop like the cage just and everybody cheering for them. It is tricky because it's like, would AEW want to put over like a different group over their own guys? Mm-hmm. But but I think like to continue with the storylines, I think that would be the best ending. It is also the thing of you look at these three teams and you go, how does this ultra group not win? <laughs> it's just, it's just yeah. insane. But there's but I mean, it can be close and it can be like. You never know. It's it's three incredible groups of of wrestlers. So, uh, but yeah, I think I think Kenny Balor and uh, Styles go uh, win because then they'll set up Kenny returning as uh, one of the biggest heels in the company and then also uh, cementing like Styles and Balor to then continue to dominate like the independency in new Japan or whatever else they end up doing. If there's more of a deal after that and they continue to be in or around impact. Uh, Cause you know, cause I mean like Balor could then go on to challenge for the uh, heavyweight title in new Japan, but then Balor could show or no, sorry. Styles could sh- re show up in impact. Right. That'd be, that'd be an that, awesome return. Be a, maybe, be maybe homecoming. this yeah. is a, this is a totally different, this is a totally different booking. But we've talked before about on the podcast about how Josh Alexander is getting like like the biggest baby set up for the big, mm-hmm. biggest baby face run of his career, having all these horrible things happen to him, like being attacked by Moose, uh, by Jonah, um, losing the title that he just won in like a minute. <laughs> He's set up. He wins the title. And then guess who shows up to be his ultimate heel styles as the new as he's regained the impact world title and then boom daddy's coming home (laughs) (laughs) and it's styles that's amazing my one thing is i remember the blood and guts match uh that happened in aw was the inner inner circle versus the pinnacle right Mm -hmm. yeah and the last spot was that spot where they're like give up so we don't push jericho off the cage Cause in a, cause in pre NXT war games match, the original war games in WCW was, it was a double ring cage. It had, it was covered Mm. unlike the NXT one where they opened it up because then they could have people do flips and shit off the top. Um, Mm. It was that once every member from every team is inside the cage, then it's either pinfall or uh, give up. Right. It's it's pinfall submission or actually I don't even think submissions in there. I think it was pinfall or you have to. Oh, submitting would be giving up. Essentially. Submitting. Yeah, it's right. So, right. so, so then yeah, the final how, spot of all of this, what what is the what, let's call that final spot before we, we wrap it all up here. Oh, the finish. Uh, yeah. What's the finish? Uh, so can he. Styles and Devitt go over. So it's got to be. Yeah, I mean, it's got to be Kenny getting a pin or something. I don't think it's giving up because I don't think there's that much emotion in there because that mm. was the whole thing of like, like <laughs> in in the first Blood and Guts match, 
uh, Pinnacle got the crap kicked out of them. <laughs> and then yeah. it just all led to like them managing to get out of the cage because originally you're not actually supposed to be able to get out of the cage. Um, managed to do that, got up top. Um, and then, yeah, it was that MJF threatened to throw uh, Jericho Jericho. off the top so they're like Mm. stop Max we're done Um, (laughs) stop Max no (laughs) no (laughs) Um, but I also feel like I don't know who would be the person to like get pinned I got it Omega like Roman Reigns stacks the young bucks and pins them both one two three (laughs) no No. Um, I was thinking of (laughs) one person getting getting three finishers like like maybe it's hangman and maybe hangman gets the 1980 <laughs> what's the what's the move that Ballard does 19 uh, the eight yeah i know what you're talking about 18 i don't, I don't, I don't, I don't uh, yeah I 1898 maybe that like it's his right. it's his <laughs> like it's his like double underhook Right, like right, right. Brain buster or whatever the I hell it is. I don't think Hammond can get pinned here because then I don't think that's well, a good no, What I was setup. saying is, what I was saying, what I was about to say is like, he gets that, kicks out. He gets the phenomenal forearm or the Styles Clash, kicks out. And then it finally is like, and they're just like, what do we do? What Everybody's down. What do we do? And Kenny sort of like basically like being like, get him and he kicks out he's like oh shit get you get him and he kicks out and then you have like hangman like on his knees and he looks up and he's his face is covered in blood he he, he just does like he does just does like this to kenny like bring it i'll take it and then he does like one two three v triggers into it's basically like making it look like you had to pull out all the stops against hangman in order to pin him and then you finally did and then that allows mm. Hangman and the box to go talk to Cole and the budget cuts and be like, hey, like, we need your help to take this on. As much as we don't want to, we need your help. Yeah. Right. And then it can eventually lead to Hangman and Kenny again. And whatever happens there, either Kenny becomes the second, the only second time world champion or Hangman cements himself as like the champion. Yeah. Yeah. So but Cole Fish and O'Reilly basically just get their asses kicked horribly, right? <laughs> so. Didn't that happen in the first one? Didn't that happen before though in one of the uh War Games matches? Um or did they win? They I can't have, remember. I think they've been in four, and I think they won two of them. Okay. <laughs> so. Because in order for this finish to happen, basically Cole Fish and O'Reilly have to be super incapacitated to not be able to intervene as this finisher spam happens in the center of the ring. Well, you, yeah, you could have or, something crazy happen between the Bucks and them. Um, right. Maybe so. that's where we get a, a top of the cage spot or mm-hmm. um, some sort of crazy ass flip. Uh <laughs> Undisputed Era won. Uh, um, I'm just looking right now. Mm-hmm. Oh, no, I interesting. To think about- oh, I, I was just looking back. So the one, so the last War Games to happen before NXT was on was obviously WCW, and actually that was for the World Heavyweight Cha- Championship. Really? Oh, yeah. It was Kevin oh. Nash, Jeff Jarrett, Scott Steiner, and the Harris brothers defeated Booker T. Goldberg, uh, <laughs> Chronic, <laughs> and Sting to retain the WCW World Heavyweight Championship. What year was that? That was 2000. Oh, yikes. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but so the NXT War Games matches, Undisputed, won- Undisputed Era won the first one, lost the second one. Lost the third one, won the fourth one. Okay. So they have lost mm. war games matches. So, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So it makes sense that they have been taken out briefly out of this so that we can get our finisher spam. Um, <laughs> big time video game type shit where we, we use all of our uh, meter to uh, try to get rid of our big boss hangman. But, oh. And that spot's took- brought to you by the AEW video game coming out pretty soon. <laughs> <laughs> they just saw like a big controller yeah, with yeah, like yeah. Omega's face in the oh. controller and just like spamming this, the finisher button. It's perfect. <laughs> That's great. But, yeah. Wow. There we go. 
I need a cigarette. Damn. <laughs> That's a lot. Well, but guys, yeah, the one thing we're missing, though, is Team Taz. Where's Team Taz in all this? Oh, oh <laughs> no. <laughs> S- no signing <laughs> pot- signing uh, potential uh, future stars, and God knows what will happen. <laughs> oh, my okay. God. I just... <laughs> where's, where's Team Taz? Where's the best friends? Where's uh, the Jurassic Express? Where <laughs> Anthony, uh, you, you is... did bring up a good point, but like this could be like the start of like the trios title situation as well. And that just yeah. opens up. You know, there's so many trios and, and like factions that could open up. This could kind of be the the crowning of the trios title situation too, and that just opens up the trios division per se. So this yeah. could be for the that's, trios title. That's very that's very good too. Yeah, if if it exists. And it's yeah. been teased for it's it's been teased for so long that I'm like, they gotta do it soon. Or they have, they have something like, in mind. Right. Yeah, possibly. We'll it must see. exist. But yeah, I think that's I think that's that's the booking is Whew. having these three Whew. these three groups form over months and months of happening in different parts of the world on and on different shows, and it ultimately culminating to like the biggest baddest cage match ever it's bbc crazy. exactly biggest baddest ca- biggest baddest cage match <laughs> yeah i mean was sweaty yeah. that was hot <laughs> yes <laughs> beautiful well i guess that's that so you know let us know online in in your review of the podcast or on social media uh at home let us know how would you try to bring the bullet club into AEW um, and give us your dream matches or dream bookings uh, to close out the episode. As always, we do a question and a match recommendation. Uh, if you want to leave your questions for us on the podcast, you can do so by either tagging us on social media, on Twitter, or uh, going to our website, unknown in films.com slash book at Vince and uh, leaving a question on there. Um, and the question that we have this week uh, because of pun and uh, our uh, friendship being through Twitch and video games and all that sort of stuff, I have kind of like a weird two part question. The first one is uh, the first one is if you could have anyone like any wrestler to like have like a video game session with, who would you want to choose? Wow. Um, like just just like pull up a game and just like play two player or play against each other or something like that and just like to have like even like as a guest on your stream like what video game like what's your like that's dream massive wow um lately i have been watching chugs um yeah been very been pretty entertaining uh, i do enjoy if you don't know for the people out there adam cole streams on twitch and he is and his his name is the chugs um <laughs> so uh, uh i could explain why he's called that but it's better to go listen to him explain why he's called yep. chugs but also like he, he's a great streamer and he has a great community and he plays lots of different games it's so fun i think i think that or like be part of like i mean even be part of like an up down up up down down situation i know they're yeah. on hiatus right now because xavier woods is you know not making any money off of that um, just to be part of like a full like a four man session of that, whether it's like even you know it's a it's a wrestling situation. I don't know. There's there's so many. But I think yeah. I think honestly, Adam Cole would be a lot of fun. I watch him, and he's just pretty laid back down to earth. And be like, hey, let's play games and enjoy this. You know? Yeah, exactly. that's kind of what I'm about. You know? Especially I would. With that. Lo- I'd love to play uh, games with Evil Uno. I oh, I've, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I've watched his stream sometimes, and I like seeing him on AW Games and and uh his vlog and everything and he just seems like he just seems so chill and fun and mm-hmm. he's a big nerd like us so yeah i'd love to i'd love to have evil uno facing aj styles and madden though would get pretty heated so i, I hear Ooh. i can hear i hear you can talk shit so <laughs> yeah i remember watching the up up down down madden tournaments yeah and like some of those guys get real into it yeah, like he is uh, emotional. <laughs> oh, yeah, very God. emotional. <laughs> I think this would be a lot of fun just to get him heated. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Watch him rage. This controller's <laughs> broken. Yeah. I'm, I'm not playing with an I'm not playing with a PlayStation. 
<laughs> Smashes the controller. Uh, what about you, Anthony? Uh, this is probably a basic answer to this question, but I'd love to play Street Fighter with Kenny Omega. Mm. Yeah. Uh, I, I'm a big fighting games uh, fan, and I know he would whoop my ass, but it would be very, very fun uh, to play Street Fighter with the proper joystick and everything. Just the full contraption in front of me. Just, just on an arcade <laughs> machine. Just go with it. Oh, that would be good, too. Uh, I, I, I might stand a chance if I'm actually playing on a real arcade machine, but who knows? Uh, but Kenny Omega for sure. Nice. Awesome. Well, yeah, mm-hmm. let us know uh, in the comments and everything. Uh, which wrestler would you want to play? have like a video game session with and play whatever game that you uh, wanted with them. Uh, and to close out match recommendation every week we recommend a match for the audience to go and check out and when we have guests on we ask the guest to recommend a match so pun what is a match that you suggest people go and see so by the time this airs this match will already have aired but as of the time of recording right now it has not aired tonight on AEW dark 11 30 2021 it seems the main event is adam cole versus anthony green the formerly known as austin gray from nxt Anthony Green is a hometown wrestler here. He, uh, he wrestled at Chaotic Wrestling uh, along with MJF. I've seen both their careers grow up. Uh, Chaotic Wrestling is where Sasha Banks and Kofi Kingston made their names. So Ooh. it's a relatively good uh, promotion. Um, but I've seen AG um, a lot of times and I love him to death. And he's been on Dark a couple of times, but this is kind of like his big shining here in AEW going up, up against Adam Cole. Someone mm-hmm. we've talked about this whole session. So I'm going to be really excited to watch that tonight. Uh, by the time, like I said, by the time this airs, it should already have um, aired. So go check out that match and see what AG can do. So, cause he's For pretty sure. Good. Oh no. Yeah. He's, he's great. I'm excited to see what more he does in a W. And I love that guys like Cole and Brian and um, I love that they're having these matches on dark and helping to showcase other talent. Mm-hmm. And not just like it's not just like a squash match. It's like actual, like really interesting ten, ten minute matches and just yeah. showing what both you know parties can do. You know, yeah. even seeing like CM Punk on Rampage is nice. You know, mm-hmm. like I know, like he's that big of a star. He's like, you know, what? I'll go on Rampage and fight Matt Seidel. You know, like that's just it's cool to see him. You know, and just, like even like just Adam Colby on Dark. That's huge. Yeah, so it's exactly. good to see like, you know, and like, I know, like I saw, I saw it this morning scrolling through Reddit and stuff. I was like, Ooh, that's a card. Boom. Right there. Like match sold. I don't, we haven't even seen it yet, but I can already tell you that's going to be a pretty good one. Yeah. So no, for sure. And we will link to that match recommendation on our website and probably tweet it out as well. So yeah, go check that out. Well, pun, thank you so much for being on. Oh, thank this you. Episode. This is a pleasure. I enjoyed thank the you. hell out of this. Yeah. So. <laughs> no, yeah, this was a lot of fun. It was a really cool dream match to book. Um, please go ahead and plug uh, where people can find you. And uh, I know that you do charity work as well. So if you want to plug uh, Extra Life and that sort of stuff, yeah. please. So twitch.tv slash the pun hit wonder, uh, the pun hit wonder on every other form of social media, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok. Um, we're just on the last couple of days of raising money for Boston's Children Hospital through Extra Life. Uh, I'm part of a team that we've been raising money. We've, uh, I think we hit three grand as a team. This is our first year as like a full team. So we're doing pretty good. Um, but over on Twitch, I just hang out, play a bunch of variety of games and make really bad jokes, which you've heard today. Uh, we are getting budget <laughs> cut t-shirts. So <laughs> that is budget cuts. Uh, so if you like those type of jokes, then, you know, take a fancy and come on and look over on my Twitch channel, twitch.tv slash the pun wonder. So hell yeah. Thank you very well, much. Thank you again. guys. I appreciate it. Yeah. It was a lot of fun. No, this was great. Um, if you want to check out everything that we do here on Unknown Era, you can uh, look us up at UE underscore films. Check out our Twitch streams as well. Um, every Wednesday we do wrestling games. Um, we've done Pokemon stuff, other video games, things as well. Hopefully more uh, multiplayer things in the future with Pun and some other streamers. Um, you can check out myself personally online at Barton underscore minute. You can follow Mr. Anthony Hall. 
at Hall and Jokes on Instagram and Twitter. And of course, follow the podcast on Twitter for our live tweets, for our bad jokes on there as well at Book Events Pod. Thank you very much for checking out the podcast, listening and or watching. Go watch some wrestling. Have yourself a good one and we'll catch you next time. See you later. Yay! Bro, that was wild. Budge. <laughs> <laughs>